Hello there. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about how to create a safe game functionality for Pygame. And here's what we are going to make. I have a simple clicker game and I can click on the red or the blue square and then I get the clicks selected. So far, this is a super simple game. But the really important part here is that if I close it and reopen it, my score is saved. So I can do this multiple times and keep on closing it and reopening it and the score will always be carried over to the next game. And the reason why this is happening is because I saved the score in a separate file. And then every time we load our game, we are loading this score file as well. And this system would work in basically any game that you want to use. So it would work in Pygame, but it would also work in Ocina or in Arcade, for example. And really all I'm doing is I'm using Python to create a separate file. And then when I start the game, I am loading from that file. That's literally all that's happening here. But that actually brings us to the first big topic, how to write files with Python. Let's talk about that. So in the most basic sense, when we are saving or loading a file, all we are doing is we are writing a file when we are saving a game, or we are loading a file when we are, well, loading a game. And it doesn't really matter what kind of file we are saving, as long as this file can contain what we want to save. So in our case, this would be simple numbers. And for that, we have lots of different options that we could be using. The most basic approach, I think, would be to just create a text file, which Python can do by itself super easily. And then you could just write some text in there, and then when you load the game, you load specific parts of this text file. And while this would work, it's not exactly ideal for storing lots of data, so I wouldn't recommend this one. But if you want to store more complex data, you still have lots of different options. You could, for example, create an Excel file or create an SQL file. Those two would be really powerful to store lots of really complex data. Although those two options would probably be a bit of an overkill for a simple game. So I wouldn't exactly recommend those two either. Although if you have really complex data, you might want to think about using those two. But instead, what I'm going to use is called JSON, which is a fairly powerful way to store data and also to send it. So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And JavaScript is used to make websites interactive. And JSON was developed to send information across the internet. But since it was developed, JSON became a standard for lots of different interactions. And you could use it with basically any programming language. As a matter of fact, if you understand Python, you can very easily read JSON files. For example, here's one that we are going to create in this tutorial. And well, it looks basically like a Python dictionary. And Python also has an inbuilt library that can create JSON files by itself. And before I get into the actual game, let's actually play around just with JSON and let's see how far we get with that one. So here I have an empty sheet of code. And the first thing I have to do is to import JSON, which happens with import JSON. And now if I run the code, I can't see any error message, which tells me that Python can import this successfully. So this one is working already. And now we first have to create some kind of data that we can work with. So let me just create a dictionary with a couple of spare entries. And in here, I'm just going to, let's go with some countries and their capitals. So let's say Germany, and we have Berlin. Then let's say we have the UK, and we have London. And then let's say we have China with Beijing. The actual data in here really doesn't matter. And just to make sure to illustrate this, let me add another entry, let's say kitten and one, two, three. So this is just a plain Python dictionary. Um, really nothing fancy happening here. But now I want to do two things. Number one is I want to store this dictionary in its own separate file. And more specifically, this file should be a JSON file. And to achieve that, let me clean this up a tiny bit, we need the with command. And this one is basically what Python uses to work with different files. And what I want is to open a file that for now, let's call this testdata.txt. And let me just be clear here that we are creating a txt file and into this file, we are writing JSON data. So JSON data is just written in a text file. So if we had to open this, Python would try to open a text file, 
But in our case, this one doesn't exist yet. So instead, I have to add a second argument, and that is a w. Just a single letter, lowercase. And what this tells Python that if this file doesn't exist, it's supposed to create it. And now we have to work with this file as a variable. So now we need the S keyword, and now we need a variable that is supposed to be the shorthand for this text file. In my case, let's call it test file. Doesn't really matter. And in here, all we have to do is type JSON dump and then the file we want to create. So in my case, this is data. And then the file we want to write it to, which is test file in this case. So test file. And this is literally all I had to do. So now if I run the code, we again can't see anything. But in this case, this is a good sign because there's no error message. But now if I open the folder where this script is in, I have a new file called test data. And if I open that one, this is what you can see. We have the dictionary we have just created in a JSON format. Now, it looks basically like Python code. And the reason for that is that Python and JSON look very similar. But this here is a JSON data set. And you could, for example, send this to a website or to a server, and this would still be recognizable. And all right, with that, you have learned how to write a JSON file. It's literally as simple as that. You could also write different data types besides a dictionary, and there are lots of different ways to approach this. But in this case, I really want to keep it simple, so we're just sticking with a dictionary. So now we have learned how to save a file. Now we have to learn how to read a file. And this happens in basically the same way. So let me comment this bit here out. And now we're going to write some code to open the file we just created. So let's just imagine that this one here doesn't exist. And instead, I want to import the file I have just created. And here again, we need with open. And now we need the name of the text file we want to target, which is still going to be testdata.ext. And this time, I don't want to add the w because I know this file already exists. And I want to again call this test file. So now, all we're really telling Python is we want to open this text file, and in our code, we are going to name it test file. And the first thing we are going to need in here is to create a new variable where we want to store the file we are reading out. So this one here right now is only giving us a text file. Right now, we don't know that this is JSON code. So what we have to do is to create a new file, let's call it data. And this time we need json.load, which is basically the counter side to json dump, which instead of writing code, it reads a json file. And this one is just reading some json file and converts it to Python code. And then we have to put in our test file. And now what this is doing is it converts all of this back into a Python dictionary. So in this data variable, we now have a dictionary. And with a dictionary, we can do something like for entry in data. Let's say I just want to print the entry. And let's see what happens. And we get the four different countries. I could also go with items. So we literally just created a dictionary. And that's basically JSON. It's a really powerful way to store and load data and you could also use it to send data across the internet. But in this case, I don't really care about sending files along the internet. Instead, I want to use it to create a save functionality for a game. So let's have a look at that. So here I have a basic setup for Pygame that right now it just creates a black screen. So we have created a display surface, we have a clock and a font, and then we have our basic game loop, and there is update and the frame rate, but nothing is being drawn yet. And the first thing to get the start is, is we have to import JSON as well. So now we have three different modules to make all of this work. And to get this started, let's start by adding a background color. So I want screen.fill. And the color I went with here is 245, 255, and 252, which is a, basically a white color. And besides that, I want to create two rectangles. And for that, let me put all of this into its separate sections. So let's call this rectangles. And I have approached this by first creating two surfaces, color these with red and blue respectively, and then use rectangles to place them on the screen. 
So let's do that. So the first one is my red surface. And this one was just pygame.surface. And in here, this one was 200 pixels wide and 200 pixels high. And I filled this surface with a red color that has the RGB of 240, 80, and 54. And then from the surface, I want to get a rectangle. So red rectangle, and this is going to be the red surface with get rect. And in here, I want to place the center to the position of 150 and 180. So the entire window is 600 pixels wide and 400 pixels high. So this one is going to be roughly on the left side in the middle. And I put it slightly above the middle so we have some place for the text below. But all right, this is going to be the red rectangle. Now, besides that, I also want to get a blue surface. And this one is going to work in basically the same way. So Pygame surface. This one is also going to be 200 and 200. This one I want to fill with a blue color that in this case is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 194. And then I want a blue rectangle that is going to be the blue surface. Then again, get rect. And in here, the center, the center is going to be at position 450 and again at 180. So this time, this rectangle is going to be slightly further to the right. And all we have to do now in the game loop to draw both of them. So I want screen.blit and in here I want the red surface and the red rectangle. And then I can copy this line and do the same thing for the blue surface. And now for run this, we get an error because I made a typo. This should be a dot. Now let's try this and there we go. Now we have a red rectangle and a blue rectangle. Now I can click around, but nothing's going to happen yet. That comes in a bit. Now the other thing I have to do is to create some text. So let's go with that. So let's add a new section. Let's call it text. And in here I call this red score surface. And for that I need a game font and I want to render this font. And in here I need three bits of information. The first one is the text. Uh, let's call this red for now. Then if I want to anti-alias it, which in this case I do want to do, and I need the color. And for this one I just went with black. And then again we have a surface. So I also want to create a rectangle to place it. And this one is going to be my red score surface. Get rect. And here I went with center is equal to 150. And I went with 320. So the same X position as this one, but quite a bit further down. So it's below the rectangle. And that's going to be the red text. Now, besides that, I have to do the very same thing for the blue text. So let me copy all of this. And let me change all of this to blue. And then we are almost ready with the boring setup. And then we can actually get to the important bits. So blue, 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 that looks good. And now again, we have to actually put all of this on the screen. So screen.blit and let's start with red score surface and red score rectangle and then screen dot blit blue score surface and blue score rectangle and now let's run off this and this almost worked i just forgot to update the position which should be 450 and there we go now we have a simple image that shows the color it doesn't actually do anything right now but that we can start working on now and I guess the first thing we have to do is to actually give us the ability to click on the different rectangles. And for that, we have to add a new element to the event loop. So if event.type is equal to pygame.mouse button down. And now we can check 
if we have clicked the mouse button. And this would also allow us to check where the position of the mouse is at that point in time. And that information we can use to check if that mouse position was on top of one of the rectangles. And for that, we first have to get one of the rectangles. Let's go with the red rectangle. And in here, we need collide point, which is one of the inbuilt methods of a rectangle. And all it does is it checks if one point is on top of this rectangle. And in here, all we have to enter is event.pos. And if that is the case, for now, let's just say I want to print red. And let's check this. So if I print in red, we get printed red. Cool. So with that, I can copy this entire statement, print it to an L if statement, and now I want to check for the blue rectangle. And this would then be blue. And now let's try this one, and we get red and blue. So with that, we have all the bits established to actually get to the saving and loading part of this tutorial. And the first thing we need to get started on loading something is an actual score. And this one I'm going to put before the text, and that's important, you'll see in a second why. And in here, um, let's call this uh, the data. So what I want to do is when I first create this text, I don't just want to write red or blue, that would basically be pointless. Instead, I want to load some information either from a dictionary or even better from a file. But for now, let's start with a dictionary. And this dictionary I have called data, and it's just going to be a basic dictionary with two key value pairs. The first one is called red, and this one is zero by default. And then we have a second entry that is blue, that is also going to be zero. And these two values are going to carry the score of the game. So when I first create the text, I don't just want to write red. Instead, I want to create an F string. And this F string is going to be clicks. And then we insert into this F string the data dictionary. And I want to get the red key from this. And then I also want to do the same thing for the blue text. So let me write over this one. And now I want blue. Oh, but I made one mistake here. That this right now is going to cause an error because we have single quotation marks here and here and here and here. And this is going to confuse Python. So instead, this has to be double quotation marks so that Python doesn't get confused. And let me change this to blue. Okay, now this should work. And there we go. We are click zero and zero. Now, if we click on them, nothing happens so far. And that's fine. We can work on this now. Because what I want to do, instead of printing red or printing blue, I want to create new text and a new rectangle. And all of this should still be connected to, to this dictionary here as well. So the first thing I have to do is to get the dictionary again, then get the key I want to target, and then add plus equal one. And this would apply to both sides of this. So red and blue. So now we're updating this file here whenever we click on one of the two rectangles, but we couldn't really see it. So we have to add some more code to update all of this here. And well, to make this easy, all we can do is copy this entire bit and indent it properly and just recreate this text. That's really all you have to do. Now, this isn't the cleanest code because we are repeating some lines here, but at least for this tutorial, this is good enough. And let me do the same thing for these as well. And that looks good. So just to talk over what is happening here, whenever we click on either of the rectangles, let's say the red rectangle, we are adding one to this specific entry in the dictionary, and then we are recreating the text and the text rectangle around it. And that way, when we are drawing all of this later on, we get the updated score. So now if I try this, we get clicks for the specific parts. So this is working quite well. But, well, if I restart it, we still go back to zero. So this isn't exactly working yet. But with that, finally, we can come to the really important part of this tutorial, that whenever we close the game, we are writing a JSON file. 
And whenever we are loading the game, we are also loading a JSON file if that file exists. And let's start with the easier one, that whenever we are closing the game, we are going to write a JSON file that stores all of this. And this is going to happen when we are quitting the game. So in here, I want to add some code. And be careful here, this has to be before these two lines, because these two lines are closing the game. So if you had a code after here, it would not be run. But okay, what I want to do is with open, so we are creating a file again, and let's call this file clicker score.txt. And here again, we need a w to tell Python that this is supposed to be a new file that we want to create. It's not supposed to read a file. Since we have to work with this in the code, I want to call this the score file. And well, all we have to do in here is use json dump. And then the file I do want to save is the data I created earlier. So this one here. And where I want to store it is in this file here that is right now referenced with this score file. So I need score file. So json.dump all needs is the data you want to store and the file you want to store it in. And that is literally all we needed to save the file. So now if I run this, I can click on these again. Now, if I close it, we don't get an error message, but we don't see anything else. But now again, if you open the folder, you can see a new file that's called clicker underscore score. And in there, we have some JSON data that we have just created. So this is actually working really well. So I can close it, go back to my code. And now all we have to do is whenever we are starting this game, we want to load the JSON file which again has to happen before we are creating the text in the first place. So right after the dictionary. And in here, you could start this with just with open. And then the file we have created earlier is called clickerscore.txt. So let me actually copy this one. And again, here, there shouldn't be a W because we want to read a file, not write it. And this one, again, I can scroll score file. And all I want to do is to overwrite this data so that when this text is being loaded it's loading from the file not from this dictionary so all i have to do is get my data variable as well and then assign it json.load and then whatever is in the score file and this is pretty much all we needed for now so now if we run this we are starting with five so this has worked already and what happens here is that when python is starting the game it does all of the stuff, the basics we have created earlier, then it creates a dictionary, but then it looks at this file and it sees there's something in this file and whatever's in this file is being allocated to the data variable. So all of this is being overwritten. And as a consequence, this text here and this text here shows the content of the data file. And even better, if we added higher numbers in here and we closed it, and now if we were to reload it, this would still update. Because every time we close the game, we are overwriting the file we created. So this is working pretty well. Now there's one more thing that we do need. And the problem here is, if this file didn't exist, we would get an error message. So let me delete the file from the folder. And let's try all of this again. And we get an error message that we get file not found error, no such file as clicker underscore score. And this is kind of a problem because whenever we start a new game, there's no save file yet. But there's quite an easy way to get around that. And that is the try command in Python. And in case you haven't seen this one yet, what try does is it tells Python to try a certain line of code. In our case, this one here. And what try does is it runs the code and see if it gets an error message. And if it gets an error message, you can tell Python to ignore that error message. So you're basically telling Python, try these two lines of code, but if they don't work, don't worry too much about it. Just continue with whatever comes next. And after try, what you need is accept. And that is um, what you want to write if you get an error. And in my case, I just want to print no file created yet. And now let's try all of this. 
So the game is loading and we get no file created yet because, well, it doesn't exist yet. But now I can click on these things again and close it. And now if we run all of this again, we still get the same numbers and no error message whatsoever. Cool. So this is working pretty well. And that is pretty much it. So I hope that was helpful and I'll see you around.